Hello and welcome again to my physics online video lecture series. In today's short video I want to talk mostly about the damped harmonic oscillator. Um, this is a follow-up video to any of my previous videos about the simple harmonic oscillator. You really should watch those first, but let's um, do a brief recap. Um, the simple harmonic oscillator was basically governed by an equation of the form a plus omega squared x is equal to zero where a is acceleration and x is displacement. So as long as you have an equation that takes on that form um, then you will have a simple harmonic oscillator. Um, so the simplest version of this would be a spring uh, where you have the force for a spring is negative kx and then Newton's law, Newton's second law, says that F equals ma. And so if these two are combined you would end up with essentially m times a is equal to negative k times x and therefore a is e uh, a plus k over m times x is equal to zero. So I basically divide both terms by m and then I add kx over m to both sides. And so this k over m term for a spring is my omega squared term. And then you basically end up with equations of motion um, that look like this as a solution. So x would be x max times the cosine of omega t plus some um, initial phase angle. Uh, so that's that, the details of that are in the video about simple harmonic oscillations. Today we want to introduce the damped harmonic oscillator. In the damped harmonic oscillator the force ends up looking instead of just being a restoring force negative kx, so instead of just looking like this, there's usually a second term, a damping term, so b times v, where v is velocity, um, or in other words v is the rate change of x, and a is the rate change of v, or the rate change of the rate change of x. So again, we can once again say that f is equal to ma, and so when you combine these two equations together, you get your basic damped harmonic oscillator which has the form uh, of m times a plus b times v plus k times x is equal to zero and sometimes we divide some terms and so on um, to get it into this form a plus b over m v plus k over m x is equal to zero. So this is going to give us our basic damped harmonic oscillator. Now a, a quick caveat here, there's other forms of damping than just a constant times the velocity. For example, if you have something moving at high speed in air, you get drag that is proportional to v squared. But if you are doing, for example, um, so type of example that goes with this, Stokes' law drag, Stokes' law drag, that would essentially be something akin to you have a spring, let's say, and the spring has a mass attached to the end of it, and the whole thing or at least the mass part is submerged under liquid so fluid with uh, Stokes drag. Um, recall that Stokes law drag has the form F Stokes is equal to um, basically a bunch of constants times the velocity. Specifically the Stokes law drag is 6 pi r eta v, um, where the 6 pi r eta terms is basically like your b in this equation, 
is kind, of, is kind of your drag coefficient, if you will. And for Stokes' law, we're assuming a spherical object, so r is the radius of the sphere. Eta is the viscosity of the fluid. So this um, eta term right here is viscosity. Okay, and so as long as you are in the Stokes' law regime, this right here could be this term in the equation right here. Okay, so what is the solution to this equation? Over here, the solution to the simple equation is something that looks like this. Um, for this one right here, usually what we do is we kind of redefine this omega in this equation as an omega naught. But to avoid confusion with notation, I'm just going to define it as, I'm going to leave it as omega. And I'm going to call um, um, omega um, um, d the damped value. Okay. So the solution is like this. Uh, first of all, we have to make some assumptions. So I'll write out a, a couple equations. Um, let omega d be equal to square root of omega squared um, minus b squared over 4m squared, uh, where, again, omega squared is k over m, okay, for a spring. So if this is the case, and um, then what you will end up getting is an equation of the form. x is equal to some maximum, x max, times, and then there's basically a new term here, an exponential term. It's e, usually people write to the minus gamma b, uh, I mean minus gamma t, but in terms of what we already have here, this would be e to the negative b over 2m t times cosine omega d times t. And, you know, again, you can have some phase offset. So this is the, the form of the basic equation right here. And this right here often gets replaced with gamma, um, which is sometimes called the uh, width. It's basically a constant. Um, so some comments about this. First of all, we have this extra term, this exponential term. This right here is what's sometimes called the envelope. Okay, and the way that it works is this. If I was going to sketch a graph of simple harmonic oscillation, I would just have a simple cosine of equal amplitude at all times. This envelope basically is some sort of an exponential decay like so. never really reaches the time axis, but it decays in such a way that it gets closer and closer to the time axis. And I kind of drew the bottom part of the envelope a little worse than the top part. So forgive me for that. Um, so my motion itself would still look like a cosine. It's just that the cosine or, or a sine. It's just that this cosine now ends up getting smaller in amplitude as time goes on. Okay, and so this amplitude is getting smaller and smaller. This right here still represents my x max value. This would be my x axis, this would be my time axis. This is still my x max value. Omega d is still you know, this right here would be like period for damped. And omega d is still 2 pi divided by that damped period. Okay. But we now come up here. Let's label this thing as the envelope. 
We now come up here and we look at what omega d is. It's square root of omega squared minus, four, uh, minus uh, b squared over 4m squared. What that means is that omega d has a value which is depends not only on the original undamped frequency, but also on the damping. And the important thing about this damping is this. These terms, b and m, are both real valued. That means that b over 2m quantity squared, which is what this thing is, also has a real and positive value. So we want to look a little more closely at this omega d the square root of omega squared minus b squared over 2 over uh, 4m squared or if you prefer for a spring k over m minus b over 2m squared. Okay, since these are both positive numbers there are basically three possibilities. One k over m, or in other words, omega squared, is greater than b squared over 4m squared. Okay, that means that you have a positive in the square root, and so omega d is real. And that's really what this solution is meant to go with more than anything else, or at least that's what this plot goes with. Two omega squared is equal to b squared over 4m squared. Now that basically means that omega d is equal to 0. This is what's called critical damping. It essentially means the system will just tend to go um, to equilibrium and then stop. That's um, kind of akin to when you have like the lever on your door so you go into somebody's office, you open the door, and then when you let go of the door handle, the door closes on its own. If it just slowly goes and shuts, that means that it's basically following this kind of condition. This condition is what's called underdamped, and it's more akin to if you have a door like that, and you let go of it, and the door slams shut, and then rebounds, and then slams shut again, and then rebounds, and slams shut again, and rebounds. And each time it rebounds, it gets a little softer and a little bit weaker of a, of a uh, slam. That's underdamped. Okay, and then three is the overdamped, which is if this is less than b squared over 4m squared. Okay, that would mean that omega d is imaginary. And so that's what's called overdamped. And again, the thing that we're mostly looking at here is this real solution. That's what goes with this graph right here. All right, so let's say that we have a mass on a spring which is undergoing underdamped harmonic motion in such a way that the amplitude decreases by 50% after 30 seconds. So if this mass is a kilogram and if the period is 5 seconds, we want to know what's the damping constant and how much the frequency has been reduced by this damping. Okay. So first of all, what is the um, damping constant? Well, looking back here, you have that uh, B is, is the damping constant we're looking at, and you have as a solution E to the negative B over 2M. So, and we've reduced amplitude by 50%. So that means that basically Y max times E to the negative B over 2M times time at t equals 30 seconds is one half of y max. Okay, it follows that e to the negative b over 2m is a half. Sorry, b, b t over 2m. 
Okay, so how do we get rid of exponents? How can we solve for b in this case? Well, what you do is you take the natural log of both sides. Recall from your math um, sort of review or prerequisite that the natural log of e to some number, let's say e to the a, is just equal to a. And for that matter, a raised to the natural log of e, uh, sorry, a, um, e raised to the natural log of a will give me also a. Um, but the one that we really need is just this one right here, natural log of e to the a is a. And so what that means is that if I take the natural log of both sides, I have negative b times t over 2m is the natural log of 1 half. And maybe the other important formula to remember over here is that the natural log of 1 over a is the same as negative of the natural log of a. Okay, so this becomes b times t over 2m is equal to the natural log of 2. Now we're trying to solve for b here, so b is equal to um, the 2m times natural log of 2 over t. And that means that b has a value of 2 times 1 kilogram, remember that 1,000 grams is a kilogram, times the natural log of 2 divided by 30 seconds. Got to throw all that into a calculator, and what we get is 2 times natural log of 2 divided by 30 is 0.046. So B has a value of 0 0.046. And then the units, of course, are kilograms per second. All right, so that gets us our damping uh, constant. What about part B? How much is the frequency being reduced? Um, well, to, to answer that part, so this continues the example. To answer that part, we know that omega d is equal to the square root of omega squared minus b over 2m quantity squared. And over here, we basically have with this part of the equation, or if you prefer with this part of the equation, we have that b over 2m is ln2 over t. Okay, and so b over 2m is the natural log of 2 divided by 30 seconds. Okay, so what that means is that omega d squared is omega squared minus the natural log of 2 over 30 seconds squared. Now the question is um, just by how much is this frequency reduced? So in some sense we've actually kind of answered the question but not quite because what we have to kind of do since these are squares and sort of a sum of squares is we have to say that omega is really equal to omega d squared plus ln 2 over 30 seconds squared, where omega d is 2 pi over the period. Um, so 2 pi squared over period squared is omega d squared. And that means that omega squared is actually equal to 4 pi squared over 5 seconds, so over 5.0 seconds squared, plus the natural log of 2 
over 30 seconds squared. And so omega squared, omega d is just um, pi squared times 4 divided by 25. First term is 1.579. 1 1.579136704 inverse seconds. And then the second term, I kept a lot of those digits for a reason, by the way. Second digit is natural log of 2 divided by 30 quantity squared, um, which, as it turns out, is 0.000. .000 zero five three three eight three seven seconds so if I add that to the one point five seven nine one three six seven zero four number I end up getting that omega squared is actually one point five seven nine six seven zero five four one inverse seconds I put to the minus one it should actually be to the minus two because it's squared take the square root of that 0.5 so omega therefore is 1.2568495 inverse seconds but omega d squared is this term so that means that omega d is actually the square root of this term here. So again, 2 times pi divided by 5 would give me 1.2566370061 inverse seconds. And so you can see there's not a very big difference between these. Delta omega, which is omega minus omega d, is just going to be 1.2568495 minus that answer. And what we end up getting is 0 0.000212. 0 0 389 inverse seconds. So not a very big difference at all between them. All right. That example took quite a bit of time, unfortunately. Um, there aren't a lot of good short examples for these damped harmonic oscillators. Um, I suppose I could have just done part A and it would have been a bit faster. Uh, but hopefully uh, the extra few minutes to do the second part of the example was worth your time for watching and um, I hope you learned something in today's video thanks for watching